All right, so to get started on this project, I'm first going to jump onto Google and just have a look for some inspiration images and see what 3D models are out there that I could possibly use for this diorama. For Mario, I'm picturing him sort of mid-air launching himself at Sonic. This amiibo from Smash Bros really caught my eye when I was looking on Google. So I'm gonna try and have Mario holding uh, a fireball ready to send Sonic one of the spiciest meatballs. <laughs> yeah, boy. As for Sonic, I'm gonna try and find a model where he's sort of like crouching down, looking up at Mario, ready to um, dart forward and smack some sense into that big Italian noggin. Once I've found the best images, I will save those and then upload them into Procreate ready for the concept art stage. But before we get there, we'll have a look on Google to find some STLs that we can 3D print for the diorama. This, this model by John 3D Arts is exactly the pose that I was looking for. And it comes with a whole bunch of bonus little mushrooms and flowers, which are just too cool not to use in the diorama. And for Sonic, this model by NL Singh on Colt 3D is ex pretty much exactly the pose that I was looking for. So this one's definitely a winner. And by the way, guys, all the 3D models that I use in this video will be linked down in the description. Okay, so using those reference images, I'm now going to jump to Procreate and start with the concept art. G'day, I just wanted to say thank you for clicking on this video and sticking around for this long. I really hope that you enjoy the way the diorama turns out by the end of the video. By the way, I just want to let you know that I'm giving this diorama away to one lucky person who is watching this video right now. You can be from anywhere in the world and I will ship it internationally. Make sure you stick around towards the end of the video where I'll let you know exactly what you have to do to enter to win this diorama. Okay, so for this diorama, I'm kind of picturing Mario and Sonic standing on each side of the diorama. I guess each in their own little biome that represents the game worlds that they come from. Whenever I picture Sonic, he's always zipping through a jungle or across a beach. So I thought I'd combine those two and have Sonic ready to sprint off one of the glistening Emerald Coast beaches with a few coconuts and I guess jungle plants sprouting out behind him. As for Mario, um, he's actually gonna be a little bit taller than Sonic just because the model comes with that pipe which he'll be jumping off. One thing the Mario model that we downloaded from John Arts 3D doesn't have is actually the fireball hand which I'm hoping to incorporate. So after I'm finished with this concept art, we'll actually jump into Blender and create a new hand that's actually holding a fireball. For the environment that Mario will be standing on, again, I kind of want it to feel like, you know, he's in the Mushroom Kingdom while um, Sonic is, you know, on the Emerald Beaches. So, you know, it's sort of, I'm not really sure what the lore is, but you know, maybe the, the two kingdoms, the two worlds have come crashing together and, uh, you know, they're battling and off to see who's the greatest video game character. Since we're already on a beach, you know, I thought that we may as well do a cool resin pour out the front of it and, you know, chuck in some some characters from uh, the Mario universe, like the Cheap Cheeps and um, the Urchins. I tried to, you know, find on Google some underwater enemies from the Sonic universe, but I just could not find, you know, a single good STL from Sonic. But anyway, here is the final concept art. Now that I've finished the concept art, I'm now going to jump into Blender. I'm actually going to turn that 2D art into a 3D mock-up. I'll add the 2D concept art into the scene just so I have reference while I'm building out the 3D model. These blocks of XPS foam are pretty much exactly the right size for this diorama. So I'll just get the measurements in the real world and then I can translate that into the 3D environment. A lot of the time these STLs, when you download them and import them into you know, a program like Blender, they won't come assembled. So all the different parts will be spread out and you're just going to assemble them like a jigsaw. Now that I've got both models in a 3D environment, I can resize them and compare them against the XPS block, which I can hold as reference in the real world to see how big that I want you know, each model when I finally print them out. I'll then do the same for all the other models that are going to be in the diorama, like the palm trees and the mushrooms. Just resizing them and then you know, approximately placing them where they should be in the final diorama. This process is important because otherwise I wouldn't know how big the 3D models are going to be when I print them out. Next, we'll steal the arm of a rigged Mario model. <laughs> the rig in this 3D model allows me to repose the geometry of the hand and fingers so I can make it look more like the hand is, you know, positioned to when it's holding a fireball. I'll then jump over to the original STL model and we'll just delete the hand that was originally attached to the body. We can now drop in the new hand and resize it and reposition it so, you know, it matches fairly well with the original model and sits quite nicely there. This electric, I guess, energy ball that I found online is pretty much perfect for at least the round part of the fireball. So I'll just reposition it and get it in that hand. I didn't need any of the hanging bits off the side of this model. So I deleted all those, cleaned up whatever was rest and then turned it into a perfect little all. Then to finish off this fireball, I grabbed an actual fire asset, sort of stretched it out a little bit and then added it to the end of the fireball. Next, since Mario had this cool fireball in his head, I thought I'd just add some electric bolts to the shoe of Sonic. And with that, the 3D mock-up is finished. And next we'll jump over to my 3D printer and get these models printed out. Since I have so many models to print, I'm gonna to have to print these out over a few days. So if the models you see here in this time-lapse are different to the ones in the next couple of clips, that is the reason why. 
So once the print is finished, we'll take the bill plate off and get those resin prints off, making sure to pop one of the pieces onto my carpet and permanently put resin there. When dealing with volatile chemical solvents, it's always really important to pick the right respirator to keep yourself safe. Or don't, I guess. Look, I don't know, I'm not your doctor. Okay, so now I'll grab all the parts and chuck them into a bath of methylated spirits just to wash off all the excess resin. 20 minutes later. So now the parts are all clean. We'll chuck them into a bath of hot water just to help me remove the supports. Satisfy. God, I love that sound. Now that all the supports are off, I'll just use a little toothbrush just to get off any remaining resin that might be on the models. Then I'll chuck all the parts back into the wash and cure and then chuck it into cure mode for it to use some UV light to finish the curing process and all the parts. While those are curing, I'll get the tools that I'll need ready for the sanding stage of the build. So that's the Dremel and the little sanding toothbrush that I have. And these are pretty much all the tools that I'll need for this sanding stage. The palm tree prints out a little warped, but you know what? Sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And then other times you drop the piece and accidentally step on it. <gasps> I think I'm just going to reprint this one. I've removed the supports from all the 3D prints. There's these little nipples that are left on the backside of all the 3D prints. So it's really just a case of taking the Dremel and the little handy dandy smoothing toothbrush and some sandpaper and then sanding those all down until it's a smooth finish. This process is probably my least favorite part of 3D printing, but you know, it's important to get all those little nipples off so we can have a clean and smooth base for the painting stage. And with that, we can now move on to base coating. First step in base coating these pieces is just to get them all on little skewers, just so it's a lot easier when I'm airbrushing them. Next, we've got a bit of paint, give it a mix, throw it in the airbrush, and then get ready to base coat all these pieces. Some of these pieces, like the body of Sonic, actually don't want to paint the white hands. So what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of Silly Putty and mask off the hands of V because I want those to stay white, uh, whereas the body is going to be base coated in a nice blue color. We'll then peel off the masking tape and the Silly Putty to reveal the nice white hands. You can tell I missed a little bit around the edges of the hands of V, but that's alright. I can go back in the painting stage and just fix up that. And then I'll go and base coat the rest of Sonic just to finish off that model. Now, instead of using Silly Putty this time, I'm gonna use Liquid Mask for the head of Mario, just because there's a lot of details that the Silly Putty just won't be able to pick up, especially where his hat meets the side of his head. The rest of his head, I'll just use some masking tape just to mask off all the other larger areas. We then go and base coat his iconic hat in that nice crimson red. The Liquid Mask dries into sort of this sticky, I guess, you know, paste that blocks the paint from touching the undercoat, but with the toothpick, we can then go in after and peel it off. This part is also quite satisfying. As you can see, all the nice skin tones are protected. And with that, the base coating is finished. Now we'll start painting in the finer details. I'll grab some paint and my wet palette, and then we'll start filling in some of those details that I couldn't get with the airbrush. I'll tell you what, these black latex gloves are great for keeping the paint off your fingers, but they do make the parts very slippery. Mamma mia! You know what? Everyone makes mistakes, and that is all right. For this urchin model, I was really racking my brain how I was going to paint all the spikes. But then I remembered I had this leather punch, which punches out perfect little circles. So I slapped a few pieces of mask tape together and then punched some perfect holes in that. I then slide those directly over the spines. And then after masking the rest of the piece, I just have the spikes left. So then I go back with the airbrush and paint a nice gradient on all those spikes. So it looks exactly like the game model. It took me about an hour to get all that masking tape on there perfectly. So it was pretty satisfying to pull it off and have it look as good as it did. Next, we'll keep pushing on and start getting the finer details on some of the other models. I'll tell you what, trying to paint two eyeballs exactly the same size is always just so hard. I then did a little edge highlighting with a bit of foam just to bring out the details on those rocks. Next, we'll grab Myra's head and get some color on that lovely thick mustache of his. I'll then use the same color to base coat the rest of his hair.
Next, I'll grab a really light gray and get some color on those pearly whites of his. And then a little light red glaze just to get some color in his lips. Now we use that same light gray just to fill in the whites of his eyes. Now we're getting serious. It's time to pull out the uh, goofy ass magnifying glasses. Just using a dark blue, I'm now gonna color in the irises of Mario's eyes. Making sure to try and make each iris an identical shaped oval. Now we're getting into the really scary part. Then working my way up with lighter and lighter blues, I'll then try and get the you know, striations and color that are within the pupil of Mario. This part definitely took some back and forth to try and get you know the right colors and the right balance between both eyes. It was not that easy. All done, I'll then take a little bit of white and then dot in just the sparkle in his eye and then repeat that on the second eye. And then Mario's head is pretty much done. And then the last step is just to take a little bit of gloss varnish, cover that over both eyes just to get them looking a little bit more vibrant compared to the rest of his head. And with that, Mario's head is done and I'll move on to the rest of his body. Just putting down some flat colors across some of the other areas on his body, like his shoes and highlighting some of the pieces on his jumpsuit, just to give them a little bit more depth, along with a little gold paint on the buttons of his overalls along with some more silly putty just to mask off the blue areas of his overalls. I'll then chuck some more red paint into my airbrush just to color in the red shirt that is underneath his overalls. And with that, Mario's body is pretty much done. Now move on to his arm, which will be holding the flaming fireball. So with this, I actually printed it out in clear resin just so I can get some you know nice transparency in the actual fireball. Once that's printed out and cleaned up, I'll grab some yellow alcohol ink and throw that into my airbrush just to get, you know, a nice transparent, you know, fiery look to the fireball. Once the whole fireball is nicely saturated in that yellow color, I'll then come back over with a more deep orange color just to highlight the front of the fireball where it's going to be more hot and more flaming orange. The effect came out way better than I'd hoped with a nice gradient from the orange to the yellow. I'll then mask off the fireball again with some silly putty and base coat it with some white and then come back over it with some red just to match the rest of his shirt. Then last step is just to come back in with some white and paint his fingers so it sort of looks like the fireball is sitting within his hand. The effect turned out exactly how it hoped when I was first modeling it in Blender. Now that all the parts are pretty much done, we can grab some super glue and some accelerant and put together all the pieces. It's always so satisfying putting together all the individual pieces and finally seeing the full model come together in its full glory. And with that, the model for Mario is pretty much done and we can move on to Sonic. For Sonic, I'll first start by blocking the colors of his eyes and then move on to blocking some of the colors on his head and the rest of his body. I'll then come back in again with some of that super glue just to attach his head to his body. And the last step is then taking some of those electric bolts, which I also printed in that clear resin and then covering them in a nice electric blue color. And with that, we're pretty much finished with all the painting and we can move on to the base of the diorama. So to get started with the base, I'll take that block of XPF foam and my hot wire cutter, and then I'll cut out the little section where the ocean's gonna go. Once I've finished cutting with the hot wire, it actually leaves quite a rough cut. So I'll come back in with an orbital sander just to smooth out where the ocean and the sand will go, just to leave a bit better of a gradient there. I'll then grab some thinner XPF foam and jump on my bandsaw just to cut out that little section where the Mushroom Kingdom and Mario will be sitting. Once we have all the pieces nice and smooth and square, I'll take some styrofoam safe glue and glue down the base to a bit of MDF. This will give me a nice flat and sturdy base to work from and stop the XPF foam from warping when I add some of the sand and other train beds to the actual works. Once that's glued, I'll then add some weights onto the top of it just to make sure it's really stuck fast down to the MDF wood. While that's drying, I'll then use some Mod Podge just to seal the Mushroom Kingdom section of the terrain. I'll then mix up some Sculptor Mold to get a nice uneven and natural texture on top of the beach section of the diorama. This will also then seal the XPF foam underneath ready for when I do the resin pour later in the build. The Sculptor Mold comes out pretty rough, so I'll add a little bit of extra water to my hand just to smooth it out so it looks more like a beach. While the Sculptor Mold's still wet, I'll then press in the Mushroom Kingdom section of the terrain just so it's more flush when I do eventually glue it down. Once it's finished, I'll then go on base coat with some browns and yellows, just in case there's any parts that I miss when I do cover it in the sand and dirt later on. Pretty much all the terrain will be covered in sand and dirt, so you're not gonna see it, but 
just in case there's any bits that I missed, it's important to have that base coat down. And then cover the whole base in dilute Mod Podge and lightly sprinkle the sand through a sieve just to make sure it's all evenly coated and there's no high spots. Then to seal that, I'll spray it with some isopropyl alcohol and then some really dilute Mod Podge just to seal that all down. Next, I'll grab some dirt or varying grit and then again, use some Mod Podge to cover the whole Mushroom Kingdom base and then lightly sprinkle some of those stones across it. And then again, some of the finer grit, just covering the whole piece and getting, you know, a natural look to it. After I've got the more finer pieces covering most of the base, I'll then take a stocking and cover it over a cap. And within that cap is some brown to beige grout, which I'll then use to fill in all the spaces that I missed with the smaller grit. I'll then again use some isopropyl alcohol and some watered down Mod Podge just to seal the whole thing. Now using some more of that Styrofoam safe glue, I will then connect both of the pieces. Now this diorama is starting to come together. So I'll position both of my models on there just to see you know, where I want the base of Mario to be slotted into the Mushroom Kingdom base. So I'll just use a little hobby knife to cut out a hole for the pipe. And then pulling out that section, I've got a little space where then I can glue and slide down the, the pipe where Mario will then be positioned in the final diorama. Now those pieces are all together and glued, time to move on to the static grass. So I'll just add some six millimeter grass into my static grass applicator and then use a little Mod Podge to sporadically add some glue to the base. I'll then use the static grass applicator to add some you know, natural looking grass around the base of this, of this mushroom kingdom. The static grass applicator charges all these little pieces of grass with static electricity. So when they fall, they, they stick into the glue in an upright position. So it looks like natural grass rather than just falling on the ground flat. Once the glue dries on the static grass, I'll then add some tufts just to add a bit more variation to the height and give a bit more contrast to the grassy areas rather than just all one sort of six millimeter grass and because in real life, grassy areas like this always, you know, have some weeds and other little grassy tufts growing everywhere. So just to make it a little bit more natural, I'll add some of these tufts in. Not that I'm really going for realism here because we're about to add in the mushrooms, which <laughs> look very cartoony, but you know, that's the vibe we're going for, the Mushroom Kingdom. And then just add a few of these cartoony flowers in. Since I created a little path in the terrain, I thought I'd just print out a little Goomba, just to add a little bit more variation and some visual interest to that Mushroom Kingdom section. And with that, my section is done. And now we'll move on to the underwater section. I'm just gonna blue tack these three models here just so I can get the positioning of them right. I felt it looked a little bit bare with just those three models. So I printed off some extra little bits of terrains, some crabs and sea stars, just to give a little bit more visual interest. Before I glued the cheap cheeps and the urchin down, I just dug out a few little holes in the sand just so they fit a bit better within the actual model. Then using some hot glue, I secured those down. And you know, what's a beach without a sandcastle? So prints off a little sandcastle model, covered it in some more dilute Mod Podge, covered it in sand. And I think it turned out pretty good. Then using some more Mod Podge, I glued that down to the sandy base. And then covering the whole thing in Mod Podge, I sort of blended in the sandcastle with the surrounding sand. And look, you can't make a sandcastle without some uh, sand utensils. So use a little bucket and a little shovel. And you know what? Maybe this little crab made the sandcastle. <laughs> Next, we move on to getting the coconut and the few jungle plants positioned on the sandy beach. Again, cut out a hole for the palm tree to fit into. And then again, using some static grass just to blend in those sections because there's usually some grass around where plants are on the beach. With all the terrain done, we'll now get ready to pour the resin. To do this, I'll just super glue some perspex sheets onto each side of the diorama. I actually went back off camera and used some silicone to properly seal the edges because I did not want this resin leaking everywhere. I then mixed up my two-part epoxy resin and added some nice turquoise blue to get that really nice deep blue ocean color. The turquoise pigment is super concentrated, so I only have to use a tiny little bit to get a really nice rich deep blue color. I'll then carefully pour that resin into the dam we created with the perspex sheets. A lot of the colors on the models will get you know diluted and dulled down but you know that's what naturally happens in water anyway so I think that's fine. I did not pour enough resin the first time so I should come back and do a few more pours. And unfortunately the colors weren't perfect so you know there's a little bit of gradation between the top layer and the bottom layer but with a little bit of mixing later it should be fine. And with that the diorama is almost done. I'll just take this little butane lighter and then pop all the bubbles on the surface. It's pretty satisfying doing this. Then after 24 hours, the resin is properly cured and I can remove the perspex sheets to reveal the crystal clear blue water. And then one of the last steps in this whole process is just to grab a little Mod Podge and lightly apply that to the top of the surface. I'll then use my airbrush to create sort of like mini waves on the top of the surface. And this will dry clear and it'll sort of look like waves on the top of the model. And with that, the model is done. Hey guys, thank you so much for sticking around this far into the video. If you want to go into the chance to win this diorama for yourselves, literally all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and then go down in the comments and let me know 
which two characters from different series that I should battle against each other in my next diorama video. At the end of this month, I'll pick one random person for me to ship this diorama to. I'll pin that comment at the top as well so you can see exactly who won. Anyway, now check out the reveal. Yeah.